Today's video is sponsored by Forever Pick, exotic wood guitar picks. Handmade one at a time in Chicago, Illinois, you can choose from a selection of exotic woods that will actually improve your guitar's tone. Take advantage of an exclusive 25% off coupon when you buy the full six pack at the link in the description. And remember, when you support my sponsors, you support this channel, and I sure appreciate it. Hey y'all, it's a shit post weekend on channel two. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, Johnny. Come on. Hey, how's it going, fellow human beings? Brad the Guitologist is here. Well, in case you guys haven't... <laughs> Also, in case you guys have been living under a rock, Tool will be releasing a new album at the end of this month. It's been 13 long years since Tool released 10,000 Days. And I guess 13 years, that's about that's about 5,000 Days, uh, I believe. Because 10,000 Days is like 27 years or something like that. So yeah, it's about half of that. So, we didn't know it was going to be a, you know, a road marker for when they uh, would release their next album, 10,000 Days. But... It's, it's been half that long, and uh, the new album seems to be promising. They released a couple albums that they uh, t they performed on tour, uh, which sounded pretty promising to me. It's clear that Maynard James Keenan has kind of lost some of the uh, top-end range on his vocals. I really haven't seen him nail any of those early screams in some of those songs for quite a long time but you know that's something that happens with age it, that's just you know even somebody as uh as accomplished as mayor james keenan it, with the you know the screaming uh on the top end of his vocal you know is gonna suffer after you know 50 years on this earth and it kind of shows a lot of also you lose as you age and everything you know you lose testosterone and uh, you kind of get a little lazier more laid back you're not quite as angry about everything anymore you know so you don't channel that kind of energy into a vocal performance uh, or a live performance the way you may have when you were 20. I, I do think there's still room for the older guys but uh, rock is you know rock is a young man's game let's face it there's a wisdom that comes along and a deepening that comes along with age and I think, you know, you're, you allow yourself to venture off in different directions and be influenced by different things. Whereas, you know, maybe when you're young, you're a little more closed off, a little more focused. Uh, you think you know everything. You think you know what you want. And, you know, as a result, you close off perhaps a lot of things that could, could have influenced you uh, for the better. But at the same time, you know, there's a raw energy of youth that just... Uh, you know, doesn't come across as you age, and I think that I think this new Tool, Tool album may suffer from a little bit of that. They have released a their first track uh, from this album, the title track "Fear Inoculum," and I thought it sounded great. I mean, it's uh, it's one of those that got, you kind of have to listen to a, a couple times to really have it burn into you. But there's some really good harmonic moments in this song. Uh, that I think uh, kind of pushes the boundary of what Tool has done in the past in a way. I don't know, it was just, it was just interesting to me, harmonically, the, the, so, in some of the sections. Now, you know, there are also a lot of uh, sections of the song. You know, it's ten minutes long, so there's some sections of the song that sort of harken back to things that they've done, clearly done before. Uh, there's one section in particular that um, is very reminiscent of one of the tracks off of uh, Lateralis. <laughs> You know, in spite of that, it's still a tool, new Tool song, first one in 13 years, and I was smiling ear to ear when I was listening to it. Uh, Giddy as a schoolboy, and I can't wait for the new album to come out. And I've actually pre-ordered it, so maybe on this channel we'll open it together. It's supposed to be some kind of funky CD package, like with a, it's like a built-in movie player with some exclusive footage, and it even comes with like a little three-watt speaker or something. Just really funky. But the thing, you know, it costs, it costs about what. 
40 bucks or something i think the album does on cd so and and i, I presume it's limited edition it said it's limited edition but they also said that the vinyl for uh, Lateralis was limited edition, and those were on the market forever. I think you could still get those sealed brand new. So I, I don't know. They might just make them in perpetuity and just call it limited edition. But yeah, man, that's you know that's one of the ways in which Tool has managed to stay relevant in the uh, actual physical media sphere. Um, you know, because even at the time of Ten Thousand Days, which was thirteen years ago. CDs were already starting to be phased out. You know, you already had online streaming. You already had, you know, I. Uh, you didn't have streaming quite so much, but you had, you know, iPods and things like that. So people were already moved to MP3s even when that came out. So and they they've refused all this time to go on to any kind of online streaming service. So uh, I don't think they've sold any of their tracks on Apple or anything either. I think you had to go buy the physical media. But yeah, just just an interesting way to you know market your band but it's worked for them and another interesting bit of tool news i saw this uh video led zeppelin are heading back to court over whether or not their song stairway to heaven infringed upon the opening riff of spirit song taurus digital music news reports that members of tool and corn will join with sean lennon the nashville songwriters association international the songwriters of North America and over 120 other artists in helping to defend Zeppelin in the case. You know, I reported on the Stairway to Heaven lawsuit that Led Zeppelin had actually lost that case and it was going to be appealed and everything. And this is the appeal that's coming up. And uh, members of Tool and Corn are going to be, I guess, witnesses for Led Zeppelin. And uh, supposedly, I guess they're going to talk about the ways in which this type of ruling would negatively affect uh, creativity and music. So, I mean, hopefully some of this uh, stuff that's coming in, because I've seen some really crazy, wacky lawsuits come in. There was one uh, that I reported on that was on Channel 2 about Miley Cyrus. It, this one wasn't musical. This one was lyrical, and it was only like a couplet, like a couple of words. It was like, um, the system, uh, we don't run the system. We don't run things. Things run we, or something like that, that she had supposedly ripped off of this reggae artist. And... Uh, you know, it's like two lines of her whole song, and the guy wanted three hundred million dollars <laughs> in like damages, uh, which was just ridiculous. But you know, anytime you get lawyers involved in, in something like this, they're they're gonna push it as far as they can push it, and that's what's happening in this case, and in all these cases where these uh, artists are being sued. So hopefully we can find some way to sort this stuff out. There needs to be some really stringent guidelines, I think, written into the law. If they're not already in the law, you know, a lot of this stuff is probably already in the law. It's just being misinterpreted by judges, either either judges who don't know what the fuck they're doing or, or juries that don't know what the fuck they're doing or don't know what they're hearing or don't know what they're listening to and they have no musical knowledge uh you know musical knowledge used to be fairly commonplace you know everybody played instruments uh back in the day you know everybody would be in band and play at least something you know or you you take a music class in in elementary school and you learn to play the recorder you know even or something like that like like i did and when i was growing up but i don't even know if they do that really anymore in a lot of places um, you know I think they have music class but they kind of go in and do sing-alongs and maybe drum circles or something and you know I, I don't know if that really qualifies as being able to play an instrument but there was a time when a lot you know most everybody could play something and play an instrument so they had some grasp of what music is and what constitutes a musical phrase or line or melody uh, or chord progression and you know the difference between something that is that is uh, plagiarism in music and something that is reminiscent or uh, you know paying tribute in music. They're, you know those are kind of two different things. Okay, so I've got to correct something here. Uh, as as often happens, I think when we get a little bit older, we get something sort of stuck in our heads, and we kind of. Uh, take it as gospel without really having all that much evidence. So uh, I want to clarify this. Um, you know, I'd gone under the assumption that, you know, probably a lot more people used to play instruments than do now because of things, you know, like video games and all this, all the alternatives that kids have uh, today to playing an instrument. But it turns out, you know, as I looked into this a little bit, came across several articles that completely debunk that idea this being one of them this is about teaching learning and playing music in the UK so this is this is specific to just the UK but other articles that I've read also seem to bear this out in other countries too but if you scroll down on this thing you could see that um, 
You know, it starts talking about 69% of uh, child learners currently play an instrument, 16% used to play, 15% never played. And if you actually look at the graph, you can see that uh, as people age and as you get down to uh, the the older people, you know, 65 years old or older, all the way at the right-hand end of this graph, you can see that only 77% currently play, 55% no longer play, and 38% never played. Well, if you take just the never plays on the top line there, you can see that as you go back, uh, people who responded to this survey, uh, fewer and fewer people never played as you get younger and younger. So that means now more people are playing instruments than ever before, at least more young people. So, you know, I have to just challenge myself on this. Sometimes we get in, stuck in a rut mentally. We start making assumptions that are just wrong. Um, and, you know, there was a study back in 2003 uh, made by NAM, uh, North American Music Merchants, that uh, also uh, sort of uh, upended what I, my thought process on that too. So, you know, uh, sometimes you got to correct yourself, and this is one of those times where I'm correcting myself. But yeah, just very interesting to me that uh, you know more people are playing today according to these polls than ever before. So that's good. It's it's almost as hard as trying to figure out you know what pornography is. You know, I think I think one judge said you know well you know it when you see it. You know, <laughs> you know it when you see it. What, what does that mean? <laughs> You know, some people might not know it when they see it, but, you know, generally, yeah, people do know it when they see it. And it's and on the plagiarism front in music, yeah, I think generally we know it when we see it. But when it comes down to, you know, Miley Cyrus and, like, uh, being sued for $300 million for, like, one line in a song, that's that's verging on ridiculous. And the, the whole thing with Stairway to Heaven, uh, the way that that court case is sort of, you know, playing out, that could really redefine the way in which all of these lawsuits are brought forward in the future, and it could really screw things up for uh, musicians in general. So, I mean, it, just depending on how this goes, you may want to try to find a different career if you're a musician and you're reliant upon uh, your intellectual property in music. Okay, so that'll do it for the news. <laughs> One thing I forgot to do when I got back from NAM that I meant to do was uh, go through all the the uh, swag and the crap that I got at NAM. Um, there was a T-shirt that uh, that one of the guys gave me that's not in here, but uh, I wanted to go through some of the rest of the crap that I just brought back with me. I'm not even sure what all is in here. This was like the accumulation of stuff. What is this? Um, oh, this was an invitation to an iconic guitars um, party. There's my Kiesel badge. I'll probably I'll stick that up somewhere as a memento. What's this? Bourbon Street Blues and Boots. Oh, they gave you these when you go into this bar uh, down on uh, uh, Broadway. And uh, I think this was so if you go outside... This is to allow you to get back in because you, there was a cover charge. So basically, you're buying beads. Got a, a Sam Ash. That's when I went into Sam Ash one day, and I actually I think I did. I buy a guitar. I think I bought a guitar at that Sam Ash. I thought this was an interesting um, magazine that I'd never seen before. They had like magazines galore that you can just grab. They're all free, and there was like huge racks full of magazines. And so, I, you know, I guys just got a couple here, but uh, if I wanted to, I guess I could have stocked up on a bunch of back issues of a bunch of different magazines because there was a bunch of them there. And and this one I thought looked like a pretty good, uh, pretty good magazine. This one's got a lot of Jeff Tweedy interviews and stuff in this particular one, but um, it looks like it's got, you know, good interviews and stuff like that, stuff about recording, so... Um, that seemed like a fairly interesting magazine I'd never even seen before. Didn't know existed. Uh, stopped by the Telefunken booth and just grabbed some brochures and talked to them. Got a sticker too. A lot of classic recordings were recorded with Telefunken microphones. They had just tons of Premier Guitar. Uh, they had, Premier Guitar had a booth there, and you could see in some of the videos the guys running around all over the place from Premier Guitar doing videos and everything. But uh, they had just about probably. A, couple years worth of back issues of Premier Guitar. I grabbed a couple here just to just to have crap to look at. 
Um, there's the sh there's the show directory. And what was uh, one of the things that was cool to me was um, the guilds. There was there were some American-made guilds there, and I wasn't sure if guild. I didn't know until I saw these that guild was even back doing anything in the USA. And then I got home and I started reading about it, and sure enough, they were bought out. They were bought by another company from Fender, and yes, indeed, they are making uh, USA-made guilds again in. California. So that's pretty cool. Love guilds. Some of the best acoustics ever, in my opinion. Really underrated acoustics. Often overlooked. What do we have here? Oh, there you go. Somebody wants 20% uh, off of uh, Premier Guitar Magazine. Use that promo code. There you go. Let's see. This is from the Tape Op magazine free tape ops subscriptions print and pdf all questions answered so there you go use your free subscription i got a couple cool telefunken stickers stickers <laughs> got a couple of these because I, I was thinking about uh doing some i don't know i was being stupid i was thinking about doing something where i stuck these up on the wall or something and then drew the rest of the uh <laughs> the machine the tape machine around them I just thought I would be cute. Um, Nashville Recording Supply. Let's see what we have here. Amp Stamp. What is this? Oh, okay, this was a. Oh, okay, this was a uh, an app, I think. So there's that. Got some other stickers. Got a, there's an Amp Stamp sticker. Rock Band by Warwick. Oh, there's those guitars. That booth that I was at. That were so freaking cool. I mean, look at that. That's insane. With the turquoise and shit in there. That's just... Those those things were off the hook. Look at the inlays on that. The mother of pearl. Look at that. It's crazy. Really crazy. Um, this I thought was really awesome. This is like... This is one of the coolest... Uh, this is one of the coolest business cards I've ever seen. This is like this advanced music products. Um, and they've got regular cards too with all their stuff on there. But they, they do all kinds of stuff. They do uh, powder coating and plating and polishing of uh, any, I guess anything, any kind of parts. And they manufacture all this stuff. Uh, but they build a lot of uh, guitar parts. And they had this whole table full. And I don't know if, they, if we were meant to steal these things or what but they had this whole table full of their parts that they make and they were just everywhere all on this table um but i, I felt kind of weird about taking any of their parts but i did kind of look through them and i took this i thought this was the this was the coolest business card i'd ever seen this is actually their entire catalog um on a on a flash drive on a, a usb uh, thumb drive basically let's <laughs> see that's a usb <laughs> Which I thought was really cool. Anyway, I guess I'm like a inner. I'm like a monkey. I'm easily amused. Uh, let's see, who's this? iOS promo code. So there's a promo code for something. Oh shit! It's already expired. Precision strobe. Okay, that's a strobe. That's a strobe app. Um, like a strobo tuner app. What's this? Complex One Recording Studios. What I have here. What's Vimex? Internet. Vimex. Well, this was kind of cool. These guys. Uh, this is wood. It's a piece of veneer. These guys do uh, like luthier supply, so they do um, you know supply with the wood and stuff you need if you're a luthier. Of course, there's my native son's dudes. What is this? Guitar Fest shows. There's there's that guy from Tay Guitars again. Solid ground stands. CE distribution. There's uh there's Davidas's card. I won't show his thing, but there's his card. 
Forge guitars, those were cool. Italian made guitars. Keg and Hosa. Uh, the guy from Hosa was really nice to me while I was there. What is this? Factory. Oh, yeah. Factory Fresh. It's the f studio where I was. Uh, Deity Microphones. I actually bought one of their microphones not too long ago and stopped by their booth and just picked up the brochure because I was curious about other stuff they made. Um, but I'll, I really like the microphone that I got from them. Yeah, these looked like really good cables. This guy kind of had his shit together. He, uh, he was, he was like a, he was an audio engineer and he was like, he basically was a scientist. Definitely had his shit together. I thought these mics were really good, good looking mics. Sonatronics. They definitely have an aesthetic quality, if nothing else. I like the look of them. Okay, here's that jack I was talking about. Okay, here's the jack. Analysis Plus Pro Audio. Okay, this jack right here, uh, you kind of had to see it to believe it. Um, it just really looked like a, a really interesting way to do it, um, and I thought it was brilliant. And I asked the guy if he want, if he was interested in some sponsorships, so we'll see where that goes. But yeah, so there's the crap that I brought back from Nam. I just figured I would show all of it off before I basically, I guess, throw it all away. <laughs> so that'll do it. All right, guys, that'll do it for Ship Post Friday. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please hit subscribe down below. And for now, y'all take care. So he was just too high strung.